I heard Duran again today going on about his ogre relatives. Poor guy. I think he's gone off the deep end. When taking an evening stroll up the cobblestone path of the western end of Coral, we can bump into an Imperial loitering by the chapel of Stendar's entrance, who questions. Hi there. You're not here about the ogres, are you? Hmm, if so, word about my work must be spreading. No, sir. Work, you said? What is it you do here in Coral? Coral? I'm not interested in local gossip. I just want to prove to the world that ogres are people, just like you and me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you just say ogres are people? What kind of people are you friends with? Why? You're not interested in ogres too, are you? I find them simply fascinating. Most people dismiss them as monsters, but I think that's too rash. Did you know that ogres are actually very closely related to the enlightened races? I don't have the source on me, but I assure you, it's true. In fact, I think we find we have a lot in common with ogres. If only someone were to take the first step in communicating with them. Since I've done quite a lot of research, it only makes sense that I would be the one to take that step. But I don't think my wife would understand. What do you think? Should I take the chance and try to make contact, or should I resign myself to being a silent observer? We're then faced with two dialogue options of either... No, Doran, it's a bad idea. Don't even think about approaching them. Yes. Yes, of course, you're right. We shouldn't make direct contact, at least not at first. We'll need to sound them out, so to speak. Perhaps if we gave them some sort of offering, a way of letting them know we mean them no harm. Yeah, that's an excellent idea, friend. We'll need to place the offering somewhere nearby, yet in a location they'll see. Hmm. Perhaps it's Spyrock. Yes. Splendid. What a brilliant idea. I understand that ogres are fond of bright, shiny objects. Here, take these and leave them on the ground at Spyrock. We'll wait for the ogres to collect them, then try and make contact with them. Oh, this is so exciting. Thank you for offering to help me. Somehow, Doran twists his escapades into a we, no matter what we choose, so instead we can respond. <laughs> sure, yeah, yes, you should go for it. Go, Doran. I knew you'd agree, but I can't do this alone, so I'll need your help. From everything I've learned, Spy Rock seems to be the best place to start. I need you to drop some things off there as a peace offering to the ogres. I understand they like shiny things, so I've brought these. Spyrock is an old imperial watch. It's no longer used, but I believe the ogres pass through there regularly. Just leave these items on the ground there and we'll hope the ogres pick them up. Then we'll figure out how to make direct contact. You too. Now roped into Jirilin's demented desire to befriend ogres, perhaps out of fear of allowing him to waltz up to the beasts by himself, with a mandarin-sized gem in hand, no less. We follow him to his nearby residence to learn more about this spy rock. Entering the Imperial Commoner's two-story abode, and approach Jirilin as he stands in his study nook in his bedroom, and spy over his shoulder... What has caught his attention? A framed picture depicting Dirilin's family tree, with him on the bottom right, and what looks to be a troll ancestor, meaning one of his imperial ancestors must have done the deed with a troll. Still in shock at the revelation, we approach the chipper Doran, and he questions. Greetings. Have you done it? Have you been to Spy Rock? No, I, uh... I actually wanted to ask you more about Spy Rock and these ogres. It's an abandoned Imperial watch in the mountains southeast of town. Ogres pass through there regularly, from what I understand. It's the perfect place to try and make contact with the ogres, don't you think? You'll need to drop off the gems there so that the ogres can find them. Come see me when it's done. Got it. Go to Spy Rock, drop off the gem. Before I leave, would you be open to telling me more about what it's like to be part ogre? We can't proceed any further until you've been to Spy Rock. Have you placed the offering there? Good day. 
I'm listening. Before we leave, we approach Girolyn's wife, Ariella Doran, who questions. Yes? Hi there. How do you feel about your husband's newfound heritage? If Countess Coral is any example, dignity and piety may indeed bring rich rewards from the Nine. Goodbye. Poor lady. I think I would be praying to the Nine too if I found out I married into a family that was part ogre. Taking our leave, our quest and updates. Girilin Doran of Coral believes that ogres are somehow distantly related to his family line. As such, he's asked me to take an offering of gems and gold to Spyrock in an effort to establish communications with the ogres. We soon find the remnants of the Imperial outpost known as Spyrock on the western trail outside of the city. Approaching the ruins, we make sure not to disturb the nearby inhabitants of Battlethorn Castle, which is part of a DLC we'll explore soon. Attempting to open the front door of Spy Rock, we find it's locked, and instead find a pouch perched atop a rock in which we can place the gems inside and our quest updates. I've placed Duralyn's gems at Spy Rock. I should return and let him know I've completed the task. Exiting the encampment, Sans Gems, we see the place is devoid of ogres. I can't help but wonder just how much coin Jerilyn potentially just squandered in his pursuit of finding these quote-unquote noble ogre ancestors. Returning to Coral the same night, we make our way to the Doran residence. Once inside, we find Jerilyn and his wife in his study. Oh. Hello. Looking up from his evening meal, Jirilin queries. How are you today? Have you done it? Have you been to Spy Rock? Yes, we made it to Spy Rock, and yes, we did drop off your gems, though no ogres in sight. You did it, eh? Wonderful. Now it's only a matter of time. I think we should give it a week and see if the ogres have accepted our offering. We'll have to keep this to ourselves, of course. Don't want anyone taking the credit for our work. Just come back and see me in a week. Until then, I'll act as if nothing out of the ordinary is happening, if I can contain my excitement. Why don't we just check now? Surely they're not scared. We need to give them some more time. Don't want to rush things and risk scaring them off. Wow, you're really looking to romance these ogres. I guess if anybody knows how they think, it's probably you. Yes, yes. Once we've given it some time, we can see if the ogres found the offering we left for them. This is so exciting, isn't it? Take care. Leaving Jirilin to his giddy state of mania. If we approach him again before a week is up, he will simply state. I can hardly contain myself. Waiting to see if the ogres find our offering is so difficult. Be seeing you. Exiting Jirilin's abode once more. Our quest updates. I should return to Coral in one week's time to see if Jirilin has made any progress with the ogres. Unfortunately, before we can return to the Doran estate, a concerning rumour begins to float about Coral's citizens. I heard that Jirilin Doran just disappeared, probably wandered off in search of his relatives. What a kook. Ariella Doran's been in such a fright since her husband went missing. Making haste back to Jirilin's house, his wife, in a huff, intercepts us. You're not supposed to be in here. I'm sorry, I just heard Jirilin was missing. Where is he? You! You're the one who's been helping my husband. He's gone missing. He went to check on those stupid ogres at Spy Rock. Please bring him home. Take care. Making haste back to Spy Rock, her quest updates. It's Spy Rock prematurely, several days ago, but he hasn't returned. His wife, Ariella, is distraught. I should head there and find him. Waiting for the local marauders to pass from Battlethorn Castle, we find in the place of the gems Jirilin had us leave, a note from the missing Imperial himself that reads, My dear friend, you'll never believe what has happened. I went to check on our offering, as you most likely already know, and when I did, I was surprised to be greeted by several of the ogres. They appear to want to take me to their home too. From what I know of these ogres, that should be at Rock Bottom Caverns, not far from here. I'd very much like if you came by. I think the ogres are going to have me for dinner. Oh, what a wonderful event this is going to be. Jirilin. A quest and updates. Jirilin is not at Spy Rock. 
He left a note stating the ogres were escorting him to their home at Rock Bottom Caverns. I should go there and find him. Oh, Geraldine, what have you gotten yourself into this time? Riding south deep into the Imperial Reserve, we later come across the entrance to Rock Bottom Caverns. With no Jirilin or ogres in sight, the dinner they're hosting for the hapless Imperial must be in full swing. Entering the cavern via a single rickety wooden door. As we descend the hall, a spiked ball and chain whistles by our ear, nearly taking our head off. Shocked that these so-called friendly ogres would deign to set such a devilish snare, we see a local ogre stone wrecker and call out, Hey there, I'm here for Jirilin and oh! <laughs> Before we can even defend ourselves, we're knocked out with a savage blow. <laughs> As darkness clouds our vision, we hear the ogre drag us away. Coming to in a flimsy holding cell next to some dead rats, we look to our left and see one of the rats cooking on the fire, intuitively knowing this is where the ogres hold their meat. Unfortunately for them, the dull beast didn't take our equipment and aroused as we aim our bow, loosing some bolts at the brute. <laughs> Breaking out of our confines, thanks to the unlocked stick fence gate, we then begin to delve deeper into the hostile cavern, searching for Jirilin and sniping the remaining ogres as we go by. Delving deeper into the cavern's northernmost reaches, we then find a small opening where a bonfire is blazing in the center, and wonder if this was the dinner party for poor Jirilin, as we see him impotently look on in horror with his furry cellmate. Seeing us, he exclaims, Oh, thank Akatosh you're here. This is all a disaster. I don't know what I did wrong. They seemed affable enough. They even invited me back to their home here. When we arrived, they locked me up here, and I... I think they want to eat me. You've got to help me get out of here. Decided not to stick around for dinner with the ogres, hey, Geraldine? I think I may have misjudged the ogres' intentions. Well, it's just lucky I found your message at Spy Rock. Otherwise, you'd be dinner. You got the note I left. Good thing I stopped long enough to write it, eh? You too. It should be noted that you can actually fail or succeed the quest with two different outcomes. Choosing to fail the quest, if we don't decide to aid Jirilin and instead drop him in his cell for the rats to gnaw on. <laughs> A quest pragmatically updates, Jirilin Doran is dead. Taking the effects off his corpse, including his meager money and key to his house. We exit the cavern 19 gold richer, and the rats visibly excited at the sight of Jirilin's sweet imperial flesh exposed. The townsfolk of Coral can then be heard gossiping. I can't believe Jirolin Doran is dead. He was batty, sure, but he didn't deserve to die like that. With no reward and nobody the wiser of Jirolin's demise, his wife will simply beseech. Please bring my husband back to me. I don't know what I'd do without him. Goodbye. Instead of simply slaying Doran where he stands, we take pity on the half-witted Imperial, believing his slower faculties must be due to his ogre ancestry. Attempting to locate a key to his cell, we see past the bonfire the rock-bottom ogre chieftain rush towards us, fists bearing down on our head as we barely block a barrage of his blows. Wounded and dazed, we begin scrambling for the high ground. The chieftain catching us at our heels, and we stand by a chest overlooking Jirilin's dungeon. Intuiting the chieftain will return from a better vantage point, we see over the southeastern ridge, the enraged tyrant begin to slowly barrel into view amidst the plume of smoke emanating from their blazing bonfire. Realizing the chieftain will soon breach the gap, as he rounds the ridge, we pull out our bow and begin to fire off projectiles in hopes of felling the foul foe before our skull too is added to the nearby cauldron to cook. <laughs> Ah! 
As the chieftain's body falls limp by a bewildered Doran, we then pluck the ogre cage key from his corpse. Jirilin then begs. Please, you've got to help me get out of here. There must be a way to free me and, and watch out for the ogres. They're exceptionally strong. Opening the cage, our quest updates. I freed Jirilin from his confines. I need to make sure he returns safely to Coral. Which means getting him out of rock bottom caverns. Moving to leave, he thanks. Thank you so much. I still don't know how I could have misjudged this situation so horribly. But perhaps now is not the time to dwell on it. We've got to get out of this cave. Can you lead the way? Good day. With torch in hand, we then begin to lead Doran out of the cave and fend off any ogres that remain in our path. After much stumbling in the dark, we finally find the exit to the cavern and triumphantly kick the door ajar. Entering the Imperial Reserve, Jirilin then exclaims, Ah, look at the sky. I feared I'd never see it again. We should split up and head back to Coral so as to bring as little attention to ourselves as possible. I'm going to head back now. You should find your way back there too. Though I did see some treasure further down into the cave. I have no way of getting it, but you might. I hope to meet up with you in Coral soon, friend. Until then, take care of yourself. From caverns to raid the stores of treasure the ogres have collected. After collecting the bounty of treasure, including a couple of hundred gold, located against the northern wall in the ogre's gore-strewn feasting hall, we depart the cavern once and for all, heading back to the city of Coral. Once inside Coral's southern gate by the statue of the Count and Countess, a surprised Jurelin will then exclaim, You made it! Oh, how wonderful! I can't thank you enough for helping me. I'm not sure where I went wrong, but... I do know that I'll be keeping my distance from any ogres from now on. I'm afraid I have little to offer for my thanks, but please, take these. I was able to sneak them into my pockets when the ogres weren't looking. Deeming a sizable diamond and four gold nuggets, our quest is then completed, though it does prove Jirilin, like his ogre counterparts, is a fan of shiny things. I've had my fill of ogres for quite some time, thank you very much. And I assume you'll stay away from Spy Rock as well? I assure you, I will be going nowhere near there any time soon. In fact, it will probably be a while before I have the courage to leave town. Be seeing you. After the quest is completed, the locals in Coral can be heard gossiping about Jirilin and his close encounter with the ogres. How goes it? That fool Jirilin nearly got himself killed trying to communicate with ogres. For his wife's sake, I hope he stops this nonsense now. Farewell. Even the Argonian assassin hides his heart, who was a part of the Dark Brotherhood questline, and I seem to have spared, which is admittedly one of many deliciously dark decisions you can make as the player during the Dark Brotherhood questline, which the developers have added. And the entirety of the Dark Brotherhood questline is linked on screen. As always, thanks for watching. And until next time, traveler.